Hi right, guys, welcome back to Bro Remade. Real quick, I just want to quickly explain. Yes, this is a re-upload, but uh, there's a lot of people out there that like, like watching projects from start to finish. And as you all know on the channel, I upload in part one, part two, and part three, and so on and so forth. So I figured I'd start going back through my old videos, compiling them into one seamless video, uh, so everyone is ha happy and satisfied. I am going to still be uploading in part one, part two, and part three. But at the end of every project, I'm going to compile it all into one big video uh, to keep everyone happy. And yeah, that's the explanation. Uh, so you're going to be seeing a lot of old content popping up. I will put in the title if it's a re-upload so you don't re-watch a video. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to quickly explain everything. Hope you enjoy the video. Hi guys, welcome back to Brew Over You Made. Today, we are going to be working with this very unique palette. I just found this while uh, I was out doing my normal palette hunting, and uh, the, it's about just under seven feet long, quite thick, chunky boards in it, so I'm not quite sure what we're going to make out of it yet, but we're going to go ahead, we're going to strip it all down, and then we're going to come up with the game plan, so stick around. <laughs> Right guys, we got all the nails out, all the pallet woods ready to go. Uh, I've came up with a little bit of a design I like. I'm not quite sure if we're going to be able to do it though, because with the amount of wood we have, the table would only be sitting roughly about 34 centimeters tall. Usually I aim for about 45 when it comes to a coffee co coffee table. <laughs> when it comes to a coffee table. So this will be a little bit of a low profile table, so I'm not going to do any work on the legs yet, and I'm going to leave it to you guys to decide if we like the design or not. And on this video, we're just going to be working on the tabletop, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to take those long boards, we're going to cut them to five feet long, we're going to strip them down the middle, and uh, get working on the tabletop. So let's jump straight into that. So this is a sort of table leg design that I want to go for, really, the sort of twisting version. Obviously, after we power carve it all and stuff, it'd look a lot nicer. But that, this sort of twisting vibe is something that I, I really wanted to try for ages. There's not quite a, there's not a, quite enough of this wood here to be able to do it. Uh, it's only going to sit like just this alone. This only sits 31 centimeters tall, and I usually aim for 45 centimeters when I'm aiming for a coffee table. So you guys, let me know what you think whether we should do this design or do a different design. But like I said, we're going to crack on with the tabletop now. Right, so we got all of these cut to five feet, and you might have noticed we're not going to be able to make a very wide table with these boards. So what I have done is I've messed around with the spacing on my table saw, and I have done this with the offcuts. I think this is going to be a thick enough table, and uh, if we can cut them up, we can get three boards out of each of these boards, meaning, well, three times the length of that, which I think will be perfect. For a coffee table. Now, I will I will say this is a quite a big coffee table, and we are very much on the slimmer side of these boards. So after we do get it all glued up, we might have to make it a little bit smaller. But uh, hopefully we can get away with it, because we still have to surface it and everything to make sure the table's nice and flat. But we're just gonna we're we're just gonna wing it and go ahead, throw ourselves right in the deep end and hope that it works. So what I'm going to do now, we're gonna strip all these boards down to roughly about three centimeters wide each 30 mil and uh, glue it all up together and then we're going to try build a router sled to flatten it all and we're going to take little by little off to make sure we preserve as much thickness as possible but let's quit rambling let's get on the table saw let's get these all cut up
Right, so we've gotten everything nice and squared up now. It's just laying on the table. As you can see, we've sort of gone for the book match sort of pattern here. Uh, it doesn't work on either of the sides because, well, I don't know. I don't know why I haven't managed to get equal bits of wood, but for the parts that are equal, we've managed to put them in the middle to make it look sort of nice. And uh, what we're going to do now is we've got to glue it all up in one big slab. Then we're going to make a little router sled and uh, flatten everything once everything's nice and dry. I'm going to try to do it in all one big run instead of cutting these up in little segments and putting it through the surface planer. So hopefully this goes well. Uh, I'm going to quit talking, we'll get in the clamps and we'll start gluing. Right, so we're done flattening, we're done with all the gluing up, we're done with all that. We have our nice flat slab and everything all ready to go. But before we start squaring the tabletop up and finishing off and sanding it and stuff, there is an issue. So as you can tell by all these blue circles I put around, there are a lot of ugly nail holes that have came through. Some, of the, some people might like this as character and stuff. Personally, I think it looks horrible. And I want to attempt to patch them. Now, I've seen this done on Blacktail Studios' channel, where you basically just get a bunch of square blocks, patch it up, and it's meant to look nice. I'm particularly not a massive fan of that, but to be honest, I like the look of that better than all these nail holes. So we're going to attempt to do that. I've counted them all. We have about 26 patches to make. So uh, it's going to be a lot of practice, and hopefully it's I can get these all done relatively nicely but we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut out a bunch of square patches uh, i'm not going to bother record recording it because it's just square patches so but i will record myself putting them in and take you through the process of that but right now i'm going to cut out 30 blocks that are all the same size so i can just repeat 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 hopefully it might make a little bit of a jig to make things a little bit easier but i'm going to quit talking and i'll come back to you once i've cut out all the patches I've got all of our little squares cut out and we are ready to do some inlaying. I've made a little uh, jig. This is the little jig I use with my router. It's looking a little bit rough because I had to shim it to make the inside a bit smaller just to get a better fit. I basically just made this on the chop saw. I took one of these, they're all the same size. I went around it with a razor blade and then cut it out just with the chop saw. So we're just gonna get right into it. We're gonna get the router get it all out and then we're gonna get come back with a chisel in these four corners and uh well chisel it out so we have a nice square edge to be able to sink these into i'm gonna do this and we'll just see how it looks in the end so let's get cracked on throw you on a time lapse and let's do it Right, so we got the uh, blocks in. You can see they're not absolutely perfect. They're not absolutely seamless, but I think they're pretty good for especially my skill set and doing it in pine. But I'm going to do the rest off camera because there is a lot to do. I've got 26 of them in total to put in. So I'm going to try to burn through them and I'll get back to you once I have put them all in and we'll show you how it is. Not a massive fan of the look of it. But hey ho, it's better than uh, a bunch of nail holes and stuff, so I'll get cracked on. Right, so it's the next day. We've got all of our inlays in. Everything's looking nice. Uh, we do have one small, well, it's not a small issue. It's a quite a big issue. 
so I was just sanding it all down just to get a rough look at what all the inlays will look like and also get some dust to fill up any potential gaps. And uh, as I was sanding, I realized that uh, the table was rocking ever so slightly. And if you can see under here, there's a bit of a gap. And uh, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it has slightly cupped. So as you can see, next to a straight edge, we have quite a severe cup going on. And uh, that's very disappointing because I quite like this table. And I always knew I, was, might, I might run into this issue with making such a thin, big table that it would be very susceptible to cupping and twisting and all that stuff. But luckily, we don't have any twist. It's straight as an arrow. It's just the cup we're dealing with. Now... I could just put some C-channels in. I could clamp it down to the table. I could put some C-channels in and uh, it'll be fine. But there's two issues I'm working with here. One is that I am broke. <laughs> I can't afford the 40 quid to go get some steel and make some C-channels. And also, we haven't got a lot of thickness to work with. So, I think C-channels is out of the picture. I am thinking about maybe inlaying some wooden... Uh, equivalent of a C channel, clamping it down to the table, gluing them in, and hoping that it remains straight. Straight once I take it back out of the clamps. Uh, but I'm really, I'm really at my wits end thinking about ideas and stuff. I think the only option we really have is to do wooden patterns to go across to keep the table straight. I'd love to hear what you guys would do down in the comments. Uh, I'm not quite sure we're going to go for this. I'm going to give myself half an hour to sit back and think. And, uh, well, in the next clip, you'll see what I have came up with. So, I have been messing around a little bit, seeing what I can do. And it turns out, just one of these slats of pallet wood is enough to pull it back flat. I've got a bit of a straight edge here, but I don't know if you've got to tell too well on camera. But, the table's back to being flat. With just one of them, obviously, it's still going to be cut on that side. But I think my idea is going to be is to build up a bit of a framework on the back and then use a veneer to sort of cover it on all sides. Uh, it's not, not my favourite idea and better plan, but it will give us some thickness on the table uh, and obviously the table will remain flat. So I'm not quite sure if this is the best plan of action. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it here. Post this video and see what ideas you guys have. So please, in the comments below, uh, help me out. <laughs> Give me some ideas. Uh, bearing in mind, like, I've literally got £4 left of my overdraft. So I am very, very broke at the minute. I can't afford to go and buy uh, some steel and make some nice C channels and all that stuff. I can only really use what I have in my shed. I have no shortage of wooden materials with pallets and stuff like that. So that framework is the only idea I can, co I can come up with. But I'd love to hear what you guys would think. I have got a plan for the warp table that we talked about in the last episode. So I have taken note of all your lovely suggestions and however great I think they are and how much I think they'd work. I want to keep my twisted base. I don't want to change the legs on this table. I really like the base, so I want to keep it. But I have came up with a new idea. So stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how I get the warp out of this table. But for now, we are going to concentrate on the base. Now, we can't just glue all of these together. It will look god-awful. So we need to get a nice flat surface on every single one of these. And I'm going to achieve that with the surface planer. Now, in the last video, I talked about how we didn't have enough to make that table as high as I wanted to. So I stripped down another pallet and I'm gluing up some six inch boards while I am gonna be surface planing the rest of these, just to bump the height up a little bit, just enough so uh, it's gonna to be tall enough to be, a, to be a nice coffee table and not a dead low profile table. But I'm gonna quit talking, we'll put you on a time lapse, we'll get all these surface planed and we'll get into gluing it all up. We got all of our boards surface planed, we're ready to start gluing them now. What my plan's gonna be is I've got my glue, obviously, I've got my paintbrush, and I have a bunch of nails. What I'm going to do is glue one, put it in place, nail it, then keep going like that, 
and then somehow put some clamps on it. Although I think the nail should be good enough. I'm not going to bother thinking too much into it. I'm just going to go ahead and send it. So, well, there's nothing else to say. Let's just do it. Fucking hell. <laughs> Heavy. Right guys, it is a new day. Everything is nice and glued up now. It's all solid. So what we are going to do is we're going to get some power carving done. Uh, so let's quit talking and uh, let's make a mess. <laughs> So we have gotten the base all carved out with the power carver. Uh, I have already on one side used the spoke shave to sort of smoothen it out a bit, just so it's going to be a little less work with sanding. And I'm about to go and do the same on this side, and then we're going to have to go around with some filler because, as you can see, I didn't nail down quite strong enough on some points. As you can see, it's not a massive gap. It doesn't run all the way through. There's a massive gap there. Some of these knots blowing out while I've been power carving it so spend a little time with a spoke shave and then we're going to put some filler on it so let's get to it Right guys, it is another new day. I was so knackered after using all them hand tools yesterday that I just was like, nope, not doing any more. But here we are, we've got it all down. The spoke shave is all nice and smooth. And uh, I've had a new product show up at my door. And it is this little angle grinder attachment. Uh, I got a, a gift voucher from work. So I decided just to do some you know, random shopping and random cheap tools and stuff. I didn't think anything of this. If anything, I was a bit worried because it's plastic spinning at 11,000 RPM. But it saves so much time, especially with this uh, carbon stuff. I sanded this whole side yesterday uh, in 10 minutes, which would usually take me about a good hour with a normal orbital sander. So I'll see if I can find a link for this in the description uh, so you can all go ahead and grab one. If you just want one... Uh, I will say though, it has a max RPM of 12,000 and it is a plastic tool, so use at your own risk. I don't know how much I trust the specs on this thing, because if it explodes it will throw pl plastic shrapnel everywhere, uh, so if you are going to get it, be very careful. Obviously don't use it while it's facing like this, you know, if, if it does explode it will throw shrapnel into you. Or in you know it'll hurt so try use it like this and don't hold it flat because it will try do all this so yeah if, if you hate sanding as much as me grab yourself one of these it, it will do a lot uh don't use it for flat work though uh i'm trying to do that because it will mess it up so don't think i'll be using this on tabletops and stuff but on things like this where i have to sand like that it is Oh, it is perfect, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to sand the rest of it, so let's go ahead and do that.
Right, guys, so we have finished up with the sanding with the base. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've just put some filler on it. It's currently just sat there while the filler dries and stuff. So we can't do anything more with that until everything's dry. So we are going to move on to the warp table. Now, here is my plan. What I have done is I have screwed the table down to my flat workbench that I know is flat. I've made sure to cover all bases. So we are going to have to cut the table a little bit smaller to get rid of all those holes. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I plan to inlay these into the table uh, once because the table is flat. So the, t the table top that we are working on will also be flat referencing off the table. Uh, so once we carve all these out to inlay these blocks in, hopefully once we let it dry, when we take it out off the table and unscrew it off the table, it should stay flat. So fingers crossed this works. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get the router out. We'll just start putting all these in. I've already marked them all out. So there's nothing else to say. Let's just go for it. So I have only decided to do three of them instead of the uh, five, uh, mostly because I think three will be enough. Secondly, uh, I, I really can't be bothered doing any more, to be honest. I think doing five of them was a bit overkill anyway, since when we tested it, only one of them, but, you know, we only needed one of them to bring one side flat. So as long as we can bring that side flat and that side flat and the middle, it should be flat throughout. So... Fingers crossed on this working. Let me know down in the comments if you think it will work because unfortunately we are out of time in this video. Uh, it's Sunday. I, I go back to work on Monday, don't I? So I've got to get cleaned up and get ready to go back to my end of five. Woo! But yeah, place your bets down in the comments below if this is going to fix the warp table. Uh, I do still need to plane these flat and get these all off, but that was the solution that I came up with. And uh, I think because of all of the buttons and stuff going across the bottom of the table, I think I'm going to just paint the bottom of the table black instead of trying to dye it and do all the same at the top. Uh, so, you know, to sort of hide all the buttons and all the rough stuff because, well, I free-handed doing these and uh, it didn't look, it didn't come out very good. It's good enough to work functionally, but aesthetically, there's quite a lot of gaps and stuff. We have our table, it's all been screwed down, it's been left there for roughly a week. We have put in these little buttons like you saw in last video, but we need to trim them flush. So I'm going to quickly rough it in with an electric plane, and then we're going to unscrew this table from the tabletop, and uh, let's see if our little trick worked. Hopefully, fingers crossed, guys. So let's quit talking, let's see if this table is straightened out. <laughs> So we've gotten the tabletop off, I've flipped it over, let's see if it's fixed our issue. Yeah, that's pretty flat. Looks pretty flat to me. Yeah, let's have a look this way. Yeah, we can work with that. So that is a huge weight off of my shoulders. We can now get cracked on with the tabletop and we don't have to scrap it. And we don't have to do any other complicated things. We can keep our lovely twisty base. And we can keep our lovely tabletop. So, next plan. We need to cut this table down to size and square it all off. Because we have screwed it in, we have these screw holes here. So, we need to trim off all the fat. Get this down to final size. Then we can move on to filling in any gaps we have and uh, finishing. 
So that tabletop is close to completion. And uh, later on in the video, we'll be sanding this down. And uh, yeah, I do need to go out and collect some more pallets though for the top where this is going to screw onto the tabletop and the base where it's going to sit on the floor. Because right now, if we put this on the table, it is just going to gonna tip over so <laughs> we need to make that a bit more stable but i'm gonna quit rambling and uh let's go square this board up ah she needs to be plugged in where you came but come here where are we recording yes we are right let's make some dust <laughs> Right, so we finished squaring everything up. It's all ready now. It's just sat on my workbench. Uh, just did a little bit of sanding to it. Just for one final check to see if there's any uh, gaps and stuff before I start doing the final finishing and sanding. These corners all still need to be rounded over so it's not sharp. Uh, so we have got the base somewhat done. We've got the tabletop somewhat done. Now what we need to work on is the mounting. How we are going to mount it to the tabletop and also how we're going to make the base a little bit more stable. So, I have dug out one of these beams. Uh, this is a spare beam from when I did my desk build. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, it's uh, up in the corner. But, uh, yeah, what we are going to do is we're going to cut this up. I've already marked out where my markings are. Oh, they're on the other side. I've marked out all the cuts I need to make. So, we are going to mill out some boards, glue them together, and... Uh, yeah make the base and the mounting point so let's quit talking let's carry on and uh, let's get cutting Right, so everything's glued up now. I also, off camera, uh, cut this bit of plywood, uh, but I did some dodgy cuts on the table saw, so I decided not to include that in the video because I don't want anyone replicating my idiot. Idiot? What's the right word? Idiotacy. Idiotacy? Is that even a fucking word? Yeah, I didn't record me doing anything with the plywood because I did some dodgy cuts and... God forbid, I don't want anyone hurting themselves trying to replicate my stupidity. So, yeah. And also, I've got tourniquets and stuff. So if I do uh, have a bad accident, I can uh, fix myself up. And I do recommend everyone else prepare for the worst when you're in the workshop as well. Get a full first aid kit, tourniquets and all that stuff. Because, uh, yeah, some of the tools we use are very nasty. And will take a finger off or cut, slit your arm open like it's nothing. But anyway, aside from the grim fact of working in a workshop, uh, everything's done there. We're waiting for it to dry up so we can cut out the final shape and stuff. And what we are going to do while this all dries is uh, we're going to look for all any little cracks, any gaps in any of our uh, patches that we did. And we're going to mix up a little bit of sawdust and wood glue to fill all those cracks and holes and nasty little bits in. So let's do that. Now, I just wanted to quickly say before I get into this, if you are not going to be staining a table and you're just going to be ke keeping the natural color, what you'd want to use is a clear drying glue. Uh, like this one, this is what I bought. It was literally like two pounds or something. It's just cheap, clear drying glue. Uh, so the color matches. But I'm going to be dyeing the table brown. And uh, 
usually when you do these little patches and stuff, the stain doesn't penetrate it. And uh, so if I dyed all this brown, you'd see a bunch of like white lines and stuff coming here and there. And uh, we don't want that. I'm going to be using tight bond for this. Usually when I've done this, it dries quite dark, especially when mixed in with sawdust and stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But if you are going to be replicating this video or whatever, and you're going to be leaving the natural color of the wood, you'd want to use a clear drying glue. So uh, let's quit chatting. Let's get on a time lapse. Let's get all this mixed up. Right, everything's dried up now. So we are going to flatten it with uh, the router sled. We've already flattened one side of it. So let's quit talking, put you on a time lapse. Uh, let's hurry up and get this all flattened and done so we can start shaping it. Right, don't know if you can tell by the change of clothes, but it is a new day. That's laying there. Sorry about uh, my phone dying and not getting the footage of me flattening it. But it's flattened. It's all ready to go. So we're going to cut it down to final size. And if you can notice, these are little notches that are left out because I ran out of wood. So I had to make the ends a little bit smaller. But to get around that, we're either going to curve the edge or put a straight 45 in. I haven't quite decided yet. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it to size, put the base on top and have a little think about how I want it to look because the twisted base, it's quite a soft curve round, isn't it? So I don't know whether if I put a 45 degree in, uh, it will clash with it or if I should curve it to sort of make it look. I don't know. I'm rambling. Let's just go ahead and cut it all up. Right, so we've got everything cut up now. It's all shaped to size. I quickly put everything together to get one final look at how everything's going to look to see if I want to make any changes. This is how the table is looking so far. Really liking the look of it. I'm still unsure whether I want to round these over or keep them at a 45 degree angle. So you guys in the comments, let me know. But all we pretty much have to do to this now is to sand and glue the base up. Put some threaded inserts in for the tabletop. Obviously sand and stain and finish the tabletop. And do a little bit of painting. Then everything will be complete and ready. So I am going to leave it here for this video. Because I have some personal things I have to deal with now. I, I can't be in the workshop anymore. And it's Sunday, the last day before I have to go back to work. So unfortunately, we're leaving it here for this video. But let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas on whether I should round those corners off on the bottom or whether I should keep them at a 45 degree angle. Uh, I, I don't know if it clashes because the base is obviously a really nice smooth twist in design. And then we got those like sharp corners on the bottom. I, I don't really know what to, what to make of it. So let me know. Give me some insights. So I've read your comments and uh, we've decided we're going to round this over instead of having the 45 degree angles on each, each side which I think is a good call. But a lot of you also said to make this table an oval. Now, I really, really, really like that idea. I really want to make this an oval table. I've never done an oval table before, but I think it'll look really nice with this twisted base. 
There is only one issue though. In last video, we put those buttons in going sideways uh, to take the warp out of the table. And if I put an oval in this table, we're going to be seeing these on the ends. So I'm going to crack on with the base for now, get it all sanded, glued up, maybe even the first coat of paint, and put the oval table to the back of my mind. Because we could still make it an oval. But then we'd have to do some some little bits to make it not look bad because we'd have to hide the edges or else we'd get that horrible sort of... I don't know how to explain it, but I think you can get what I mean. So we're going to put that at the back of my mind. I'm going to have a think about maybe the right way of doing it. Might just round the corners off. I'm not too sure. I do like the, really like the oval table idea. But enough rambling. Let's get on with this. We need to take down the corner so it's all nice and rounded. Then we need to sand it all up. So I'm going to quit rambling because this is a real long intro. But let's get cracked on. Right, we are done with the sanding now. Uh, I, I don't know if you could tell, but I cut out a lot of the sanding because, well, there is a lot of sanding. Uh, but what I have gone and done is I've taken a pencil. I have marked out where the base is sitting after I've measured it all up to make sure that it's, uh, you know, going to be centered. And right now what we're going to do is we're going to use those markings to drill a hole uh, through everything where the screws are going to go. Then we are going to glue and screw it in.
Right guys, so we are on to the final stretch now. We have everything put together. The third and inserts are in, it is a solid table, and luckily, she doesn't move, she doesn't topple over. If I press this side, it's fine. If I press this side, it's fine. Like, it's good. We don't have to put any more supports in. The bottom plate and the top plate are enough to make sure this table is stable enough. Table, stable. Table, stable. Stable, table, stable. It's stable. So all we're going to do now is we're going to sand this uh, nice and smooth, nice and flat. Then we're going to round everything over, give everything a once final sanding and stuff. Then uh, we can move on to staining everything. So I'm going to quit talking. Let's get into it. Right, so we have everything stained there. We're just waiting on it to dry before we can put any lacquer or anything on that. Uh, so after you do dye it and everything, you need to, do need to wait for it to fully dry. So I don't know whether to leave it for a week or just put it inside the house for a night. I might, I'm a little bit worried because we've introduced so much moisture to it that if I just bring it inside the house to quickly dry, whether it will uh, warp or anything since we've already had tables with this table. We've already had issues with this table warping. So I'm going to sit and think about it. But while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to have a start on this base. And we're going to start spray painting it. Uh, we'll do the first coat and then we'll sand it back to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we'll go on and we'll just give loads and loads of layers. I don't really want all these lines from all the palette wood build up to show up. So we're going to have to do a lot of layers of paint. To make it look like one solid block 
But uh, yeah, quit talking, let's start spraying. It's been a week. Uh, I've, I left the table inside the house to fully dry out for a week. Uh, and this weekend, I was supposed to be actually finishing the table. But we uh, uh, we picked the warp back up. Uh, I was really worried about this. And I've been thinking about it. And uh, I'm going to finish this table for the sole purpose of this video. So we can see what the end product looks like. But I am not going to sell this table. I'm uncomfortable giving this to a com customer. I don't want it to. I don't want it to leave my shop nice and straight, and then to warp down the line. So, I'll be making another tabletop for this base at some point in the future. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to fix it up. Uh, you know, spray some lacquer on it, put it on there, take some photos and stuff, and uh, I'll probably take the tabletop off and make make some shelves out of it. I do need some shelves, and then at some point in the future, uh, have another crack at making a tabletop for this base, and just put that base in storage for a bit. So that's a bit of a bummer, but last thing I want to do is, you know, give a stressed table to a customer that's going to warp on them down the line. So, yeah. What we're going to get on with now is uh, spraying the table with lacquer. This is pretty much already done. Uh, I have already sanded and painted it and give it a second coat. All I've got to do now is just keep putting coats on it. So I won't include that in the video. But we'll spray this table now. We'll get it all uh, nice and lacquered up. And uh, yeah, we'll put everything together and see how it looks. <laughs> 